Good morning friends, I am Srishti Jain and today we are going to do 5 questions of finance. Today we are going to discuss some important concepts related to ETAL, Indian financial system, financial management and monetary policy committee. So do watch the video till end. If you like my video then do subscribe to our channel, hit the bell icon. Now starting with the first question for today. The question says that phase 2 of the Indian financial system has contributed majorly in creation of new institutions to make the system more efficient and reliable. Which of the following statement is associated with the financial structure of the industrial enterprises in phase 2? So guys, phase 2 started from 1951 and it was still mid-80s. Now, let's see what was the scenario in phase 2 regarding the industrial enterprises and then we will be in a better position to answer this question. So guys, during the strengthening of the financial structure, development financial institutions were established and the first DFI was established in the year 1948 and that was IFCI that is Industrial Finance Corporation of India and then further in phase 3, it was privatized and converted into a public company. Then after when the DFIs were formed, they maintained a dominant position in the Indian financial system and they were formed to give term loans to the industrial enterprises. And term loans are basically the long term loans. So as more and more DFIs were lending to the industrial enterprises, the capital structure of the industrial enterprises were full with the debt that is a long term capital and they turned out to be equity less structure because there were no trading on equity followed by the enterprises and they took more and more of the borrowings by DFIs. So then industrial corporations begin to default as they were not in a position to repay back to the DFIs and then eventually DFIs were in the problem. And maybe this was the reason that in phase 3 some DFIs were converted and privatized. So now let's move back to the question. The question says that enterprises experienced debtless structure which is wrong because they take more and more of the debt by DFIs then the second is that they experience equity less structure so yes this is the answer option B the C part says that enterprises focus upon trading on equity so what trading on equity means balancing the debt and the equity component in the capital structure based upon the consequences of each of the component as debt is associated with the interest charges but it is cheaper than equity. But more of the debt will cause problem to the equity shareholders whereas more of equity will be expensive for a firm as debt is a cheaper source of capital. Then the fourth one is enterprises relied mainly on own funds to form its capital structure and what is own funds that is equity so this is not the answer because they do not rely on the equity they relied on the debt and as a result there was a equity less structure and the fifth one is that enterprises relied mainly on the foreign fund so this is also not true so option b is the correct answer over here now moving on to the next question for today department of electronics and information technology ministry of communications and information technology launched ethal dashboard for providing a real-time aggregated view of e-services. Now choose the correct statements regarding ETHAL. So you must be wondering that what ETHAL is. So ETHAL is the electronic transaction aggregation and analysis layer. So it is a public service developed by the India's National Informatics Center to measure the impact of various e-governance initiatives at the national and state levels. And as an indispensable analytical service, it also provides an integrated visual interface providing a real-time view of the e-transactions taking under various e-governance applications implemented by the government in an easily understandable visual graphic. So now let's read the statements. Firstly, it is a platform for dissemination of e-transaction statistics of the national and state level e-governance projects excluding the mission mode projects. 
Then we have eTAL automatically pulls the e transaction data from the application integrated with it using the web service technology and facilities quick analysis of the transaction data for the user. And lastly, Andhra Pradesh tops the top five states in e transaction count. So, firstly, let me tell you the answer and then we will be discussing some important facts about ETAL in the next slide. So statement 2 and statement 3 are the correct one. So that is option C is the correct answer. Now you must be wondering that why not one? Because it says that it is a platform for dissemination of e-transaction statistics of the national and state level e-governance projects excluding the mission mode projects. But it is including the mission mode projects. Now we will be seeing that what mission mode projects are. So guys, Mission Mode Projects is an individual project within the National E-Governance Plan that focuses on one aspect of the electronic governance. That may be banking or the land records or the commercial taxes. Now have a look at this graph. It is the e-transaction count in crores and Andhra Pradesh tops the top 5 states here. So that is statement 3 that we have said that Andhra Pradesh tops the top 5 states in e-transaction count is correct. After Andhra Pradesh, Telangana is there, then Gujarat, then Kerala and then Uttar Pradesh. Now moving on to the next question for today. The question says that with reference to the Monetary Policy Committee, Consider the following statements. First statement is that MPC determines the policy rates required to achieve the inflation target. Second statement says MPC was given statutory basis by amending the Reserve Bank of India Act 1934. And the third one says that Reserve Bank's Monetary Policy Department assist the Monetary Policy Committee in forming the monetary policy. So yes, all the three statements are correct. And therefore, our answer is option E. Now, we will be looking at what MPC is and some facts about it in the next slide. So, this monetary policy is a six-member committee constituted by the central government. As per the section 45 ZB of the amended RBI Act 1934. The primary objective of MPC is to maintain the price stability while keeping in mind the objective of growth. Price stability is a necessary precondition to sustainable growth. And in May 2016, RBI Act 1934 was amended to provide a statutory basis for the implementation of the flexible inflation targeting framework. Now let's discuss what is the framework of the Monetary Policy Committee. The framework aims at setting the policy rate. That is a repo rate based on assessment of the current and evolving macroeconomic situation and modulation of the liquidity conditions to anchor money market rates at or around the repo rate. So repo rate changes transmit through the money market to the entire financial system which in turn influences the aggregate demand which is a key determinant of the inflation and growth. Now we will be discussing the instruments of monetary policy. So there are two kinds of instruments. First is the quantitative types also known as a general or the indirect one and next is qualitative which is selective or we can say direct. So why is quantitative general and indirect? Because once a monetary policy sets the repo rate then it affects the entire financial system as a whole in general and indirectly as well. But if we talk about the qualitative instruments then it is targeted selectively on a particular institution. So, for example, in qualitative moral situations can be there, while in quantitative setting of the CRR, SLR, open market operations, bank rate, repo rate can be there. So, with this, we have completed the important things to be considered in monetary policy committee. Guys, do join our telegram group and channel for more free material. It will be really beneficial for you all in your examinations. Now moving on to the next question for today. The question says that which among the following is not a motive for holding cash in the organization. So as we all know, organizations, every organization, be it big, be it small, they hold cash. So the question is asking, that which of the following is not a motive for holding cash. So in financial management, there are four motives 
for holding cash the first is the transaction motive so business firms as well as individuals keep cash because they require it for meeting the demand for cash flow arising out of day to day transactions and in order to meet the obligations for cash flows arising in the normal course of business every firm has to maintain adequate cash balance so the necessity of keeping a minimum cash balance to meet the payment obligations arising out of expected transactions is known as the transaction motive for holding the cash the next one is the precautionary motive so the precautionary motive of holding cash is based on the need to maintain the sufficient cash to act as a cushion or a buffer against unexpected events so you are just taking precaution of unexpected events that might occur in future so for that you are keeping sufficient cash as a cushion or a buffer to safeguard against those unexpected events so that is a precautionary motive now we have the speculative motive so cash may be held for speculative motive also in order to take advantage of the potential profit making situations for example a firm might have an opportunity to purchase a raw materials at heavy discount if paid in cash so to take the advantage of such potential profit making situations speculative motive of holding cash is there then we have the compensation motive so what is compensation motive now as we all know that if we open the current accounts in some bank then there is a minimum amount minimum balance that we have to keep it it may vary from rupees 5000 to rupees 10000 so this amount remains as a permanent balance with the bank so long as the current account is operative and in order to avail the convenience of current account the minimum cash balance must be maintained by the firm and this provides the compensation motive for holding the cash so these are the four motives and therefore here our answer will be the profitability motive that is option d now moving on to the next question and the last question for today the question says A company ABC Limited is required to maintain adequate working capital in order to be successful amid competition. Managers of ABC Limited is finding it difficult to find the amount that should be kept aside as the working capital. Which of the two factors is considered by the managers of ABC and is regarded as the risk return trade-off? So guys, the risk return trade-off involved in managing the firm's working capital is the trade off between the firm's liquidity and profitability we know that a firm must maintain enough cash balance or other liquid assets so that it never faces the problems of payment to liabilities that means it should maintain enough working capital with itself but then does it mean that a firm should maintain unnecessary large liquidity to pay the creditors so certainly not because there is another side of the coin that is greater liquidity makes the firm meeting easily its payment commitments but simultaneously if there is a liquidity then greater liquidity involves cost also and greater liquidity means greater cost which will affect the profitability of the firm so before maintaining the working capital a firm must need to think and trade off between liquidity and the profitability for example by maintaining a large investment in the current assets like cash inventory the firm reduces the chances of production stoppages and the loss sales from the inventory shortages or the inability to pay the creditors because it is maintaining enough liquidity or the liquid assets with itself but however as the firm increases its investment in the working capital there is not a corresponding increase in the profitability as the same funds used for the working capital could be used for some other better investment proposal giving returns so there is the opportunity cost involved in such a case and therefore the profitability is not rising with the increase in the working capital or the liquidity so this means that the firm's return on investment drops because the profit are unchanged while the investment in current assets increases so therefore there is a trade off between liquidity and profitability and our answer is option d 
that is liquidity and profitability. So with this, we have completed five questions of finance for today. I hope that you have understood each and every concept discussed today. And if not, then do not hesitate to ask me in the comment section below. If you like my video, then do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you for watching the video.